Okay, welcome to the next section. Now we're going to take these brains and we're going to start sectioning them in every different direction. And we're going to follow these sections uh, and see how the internal structures change. So this first group, we're going to take a look at uh, coronal sections. And you can see in the bottom right, we can see how um, uh, the red line is showing about where the section is taken from in a mid-sagittal view of the brain, so we can get uh, kind of our bearings. Now, the section that we're looking at is actually a stained section. We've used a chemical process uh, to add coloration. And in this uh, particular stain called the Wiegert stain, it stains white matter tracts, the lipid white matter of axons. It stains those black or dark brown. And so here we see all of the white matter tracts showing up as black, which makes it easier to differentiate the nuclei as well. So the primary landmark we're going to look for, uh, generally the ventricles, the lateral ventricles here. We have one on either side. That's the white space below the corpus callosum. So the corpus callosum is a bundle of white matter tracts uh, that extend from one side of the brain to the other. Just travel straight across uh, to the corresponding opposite side. So very densely packed white matter uh, of, from the corona radiata, from the cortices, traveling to the other side. <clears throat> now we have another white matter tract uh, that we've talked about already, and that is the uh, internal capsule I'm circling right now on the right side of the brain. So whenever you look at a medical image or a section, it's flipped as if you were looking at the patient head on. Uh, so the right side is on your left. So this is the internal capsule here, white matter tract. So that contains the corticospinal fibers coming down from the uh, primary motor cortex. It also contains the afferents, the somatosensory afferents coming up from the spinal cord. <clears throat> so white, very important white matter tract. The internal capsule separates two uh, nuclei, the caudate nucleus here, caudate nucleus, and the putamen. So we can see the putamen right here, uh, below, inferior to the internal capsule. The putamen continues around toward the medial portion, and uh, the nucleus accumbens is formed in the medial part of the striatum. So this entire uh, internal region of the brain is called the striatum, the caudate, the putamen, the uh, nucleus accumbens. And between the putamen and nucleus accumbens is the globus pallidus uh, that I've put a G on top of, globus pallidus. So the nucleus accumbens is interesting because it is the reward center of the brain. And it's uh, the region of the brain associated with addictive behavior. So whenever you do something that you get a sense of uh, pleasure or joy out of, that feeling is the result of a surge of dopamine in the nucleus accumbens, being released in the nucleus accumbens. So whenever the nucleus accumbens is stimulated, you get this pleasant sensation, which uh, encourages you to perform that act again or, or be in that situation again to eat that piece of chocolate to you know whatever so um it experiments have actually been done where an electrode has been implanted in the nucleus accumbens of uh rats and the rats in their home cages have been given two buttons one button opens uh a a dispenser of food and gives them a pellet of food and the other button stimulates their nucleus accumbens. These rats, when given the choice between the two buttons, will uh, will forego getting food, forego press, they will not press the button to get food in favor of repeatedly pressing the button that stimulates their nucleus accumbens because that button gives them uh, that pleasant satisfaction response that everything feels great. And so, these rats will actually starve themselves to death pressing the button to stimulate their nucleus accumbens. Uh, so that's how powerful uh, that, that sensation can be. Uh, so interesting bit of research there. Okay, moving on. Uh, 
to, so if we have an internal capsule, there must be something external, right? So here we can see, I'm going to do it on the opposite side, on the left hemisphere, we can see the internal capsule, but we can also see the external capsule here, uh, that dark uh, white matter tract. If we have an external capsule, well, we're going to have an extreme capsule too. And we can see that extreme capsule here. Between the extreme and the external capsule is a portion called the claustrum. We don't really know what the claustrum does, but it seems to uh, fire, activate in concert with cortical neurons. So if the cortex is like the uh, all of the members of an orchestra that are playing different instruments for different sensations, different senses, the claustrum we think is more like the conductor that coordinates all the information and uh, tells the cortex what's important, what information needs to be played loudly, what information uh, can be played quietly or can be ignored. Uh, and so the conductor, the claustrum, that's what we think that area is doing. Now, uh, one last, well, not one last thing, but one more thing. Uh, be separating the ventricles is a region called the septum pellucidum, just a thin little layer there. And within the septum pellucidum, we have a white matter tract called the fornix. You can see maybe a little bit of the anterior most portion of the fornix there. I mentioned before, the fornix connects the hippocampus to the mammillary bodies for encoding memory. So just above the corpus callosum, we have the cingulate cortex there. Uh, we have the uh, cingulate sulcus above that, and then we get into the regions of the cortex above that. Okay, so that's it for this section. Now I would like you to pick a landmark and observe that landmark as we transition to the next slide so that we can get a feel for the three-dimensional structure of these different brain regions. So we can start putting these slices together and understand how they change as we move. So pick a landmark, here we go, three, two, one, boom. Next slide. So we still see the corpus callosum. We still see the septum pellucidum. Now we see larger uh, fornices, uh, the white matter tracts in the septum pellucidum. We see the internal capsule uh, and it has changed shape a little bit. We see the external capsule and the extreme capsule and the colostrum between them. We still see the caudate nucleus here uh, within the lateral wall of the lateral ventricles is the caudate nucleus separating the caudate nucleus uh, and from the putamen is the internal capsule. So we know the putamen is still down here. Now we can see a larger region of the globus pallidus right there. And we also see a new feature, this black horizontal line, which is crossing between the two hemispheres. And that is called the anterior commissure. A commissure is a white matter tract uh, that, that uh, joins the two hemispheres. So the anterior commissure is actually connecting the amygdala. Um, and so the amygdala will, the amygdalus uh, on either side will appear in the next slide. There's a little bit of amygdalar tissue, looks like about there. Uh, so those are going to end up connecting to the amygdalus uh, on both sides so that the amygdala share information. We still see the uh, cingulate uh, cortex and the cingulate sulcus. Now we have an interesting little a white matter tract appearing in space, dangling below the brain. <clears throat> so what is a white matter tract that's on the inferior side of the brain that comes together to form an X? Oh, you're right, it's the optic chiasm. So these are the optic nerves heading to the uh, orbit and ended up, they're starting to form the optic chiasm coming together right there. Okay, so now again, uh, pick a feature and we're going to move to the next slide and we're going to see how those features change and move. So here we go, three, two, one, boom. 
Now, we still see the corpus callosum. We still see the cingulate cortex. We still see the internal capsule, but things are starting to change a bit now. So now, uh, so always, the internal capsule separates the caudate on the wall of the ventricle from the putamen more inferiorly. We can see the globus pallidus and some of the white matter tracts within the globus pallidus. The globus pallidus now uh, starting to be differentiated by those white matter tracts. We have an uh, external globus pallidus and an internal uh, globus pallidus called GPE and GPI is how I'll refer to them. So um, we have some interesting features. So here's a little uh, white matter tract on the ventral side of the brain, the basal side of the brain. That is the optic uh, optic nerve, the optic tract, uh, actually heading to uh, to the uh, the LGN, really the brain, deep in the brain. <clears throat> but we have this big bulbous thing on the inferior, the floor of the lateral ventricles. So this big, huge bulbous thing is not part of the caudate nucleus. It's not part of the putamen. It's actually not part of the striatum at all. This is the thalamus. We can see the thalamus now uh, on either side. And the thalamus contains its own individual nuclei, uh, which we'll talk about in the uh, lecture coming up. Uh, but right now, uh, just understand that's the thalamus. Now we have a white matter, I mean, a, a, a white region, which, contain, which is gray matter below the thalamus. And that, because it's below the thalamus, that's the hypothalamus. So you can actually see that V-shaped region uh, beginning to form the infundibulum heading down, which will pierce that optic chiasm, which we don't see in this section because we're too far posterior for the optic chiasm now. Within the hypothalamus, we have the anterior commissure. So the anterior commissure has changed because it's traveling anterior posterior now instead of straight across horizontally. That anterior commissure is again connecting the amygdalae uh, together so they can process information. And the amygdala is just this uh, nuclear region on the deep uh, medial side of the temporal cortex. Okay, uh, so I will move on from this slide. So now let's take a look uh, again, grab a landmark, maybe the thalamus this time. Uh, since it's new, and let's see how these features change. Three, two, one, boom. So we still have a corpus callosum. We still have the fornices right there. We still have the lateral ventricles. The thalamus is getting bigger. Thalamus is the way station for the brain. So it's processing a lot of sensory afferents and motor efferents. We still see the internal capsule on either side right there, and it's separating the caudate. So there's the tail of the caudate is getting very tiny uh, now, and we can see the putamen uh, below the internal capsule. We can still see some of the GPE and GPI, and we can see uh, still the optic tract heading back to the LGN, which we do not yet see. So here's some interesting things we do see. Here are those two uh, bumps on the bottom of the brain. Those are the mammillary bodies. Uh, so the fornices are traveling down there and uh, innervating the mammillary bodies, and the mammillary bodies uh, then supply information to the uh, thalamus. So we have the mammalothalamic tracts right here, these dark white matter tracts heading up from the mammillary bodies to the thalamus. So the mammillary bodies in the hippocampus are just saying, hey, what's happening right now is important. We need to remember it. So all of the neurons that are firing right now, let's reinforce those so they wire together and get stronger. Uh, so uh, that's what the mammillary bodies are doing. They're, they're sending to the thalamus uh, all of these connections that uh, stimulate the sensations that are going on and the motor outputs that are occurring to make those easier uh, to call up uh, later on. So that's the basis of memory formation. We still see a little bit of amygdala 
here, but now we're starting to give away to the hippocampus and the perihippocampal gyrus uh, right there. We also see the insular cortex here on the lateral side now on both sides. Uh, but now let's keep moving as we go more posterior and see what happens next. Uh, so take a look at the internal capsule. We, we'll see how that starts changing. Three, two, one, boom. So now the internal capsule is kind of changing its orientation, heading down here, and it's actually starting to connect and form the midbrain, the anterior portion of the midbrain. And that anterior portion is the cerebral peduncle, also called the cruse cerebri. Uh, so this is those ascending and descending corticospinal tracts. Now we see more clearly the hippocampus on either side, named because it looks like a seahorse, um, uh, whatever, I, I don't know, uh, I didn't name it, but sure, seahorses are good, they're cute. Uh, so um, we still have this large thalamus getting larger by the moment, and uh, most of these other structures, corpus callosum, we still have the fornices, we still have the ventricles, but now between the thalami, we can see the third ventricle. So these lateral ventricles uh, through the interventricular foramen, that CSF is draining now into the third ventricle uh, there. <clears throat> okay, so now let's take a look at the next section. And uh, we can now see a large portion of the brain stem. So we still have the thalamus here with its individual nuclei we're not getting into. We still have the fornices, we still have the corpus callosum and the ventricles, we still have the third ventricle, and now we're getting into the cerebral aqueduct, which is located in the, uh, in the brain stem, in the midbrain. So we're gonna start to see the tectum probably in the next slide. But here, this is now the brain, the midbrain, part of the brain stem. We have the cerebral peduncles, on either side formed from the internal capsule. And we have structures of the midbrain now. We're starting to get some of what's called um, the substantia nigra, which is the dopaminergic center of the brain. It's named substantia nigra because it has a high content of neuromelanin within it. It actually, uh, in a non-stained section, looks uh, dark in color because of the high content of neuromelanin, which is a consequence of the production of dopamine in the central nervous system. So that's why it's that coloration. Above that, we have the red nucleus, this circular nucleus, very prominent. And it's red because it's uh, it actually looks pink in the brain, in a normal brain, unstained. Um, and the red nucleus, is part of that rubrospinal tract we've already talked about. Now we see some interesting other structures. Of course, we still have hippocampus, but now we can see some of the LGN, the lateral geniculate nucleus above the hippocampus. LGN is the target of the optic nerve. So this is the first um, extra ocular processing center for visual information in the central nervous system. And it's said that the LGN looks like Napoleon's hat. Uh, so, you know, we'll see if you, uh, you, you can agree or disagree, but uh, if it works, that's a way to help you remember it. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Boom, here we go. We still have corpus callosum. We still have the fornices. We still have the lateral ventricles. We still have the third ventricle uh, forming the cerebral aqueduct heading down posteriorly here. Uh, so it's too small for me to label, but it's right there in the uh, middle. We can see the pineal gland, pineal body there. We have a lot of thalamus still, but the rest of this is midbrain. We can still see the circular red nucleus and the uh, substantia nigra, and we can see the cerebral peduncles. Uh, there. Now we're starting to get a little bit of the patamen, or the pons, uh, sorry, not patamen, the pons coming in right here. Pons, P O N S. Uh, we can also see, so we still, we, the caudate is always in the lateral ventricles. Uh, 
uh, we can see a little bit of the caudate right there still. So it's C-shaped, it kind of follows the lateral ventricles. We can see some of Napoleon's hat, the LGN right there on either side, LGN. And on this side, we also see uh, some of the MGN medial to it. Those are the LGN and MGN are technically part of the thalamus. Uh, but the LGN is for vision, MGN is for auditory sense. And here we actually see above the hippocampus, we see some of the lateral ventricle. So the lateral ventricle is the C shape. It goes down deep uh, into the temporal uh, lobe as well as within the frontal and parietal lobes. It also has a posterior horn that goes back into the occipital lobe. So we'll see a lateral ventricle throughout the brain sections in various different regions. Uh, okay, moving on, we are deeper into getting into the pond. So here's lots of pond's tissue. Here we can actually see the, the basilar artery, uh, sorry, the basilar artery on the surface of the pond. I just circled it. The pineal gland, corpus callosum, of course, the fornices, of course. We have some choroid plexus within the ventricle. And now we are starting to lose the, um, the thalamus, starting to lose that thalamus. We still got a big portion of it, but we're starting to lose it. So this is all midbrain now. We can see the cerebral peduncles. We can see the cerebral aqueduct. Uh, we can see uh, the, uh, what else can we see? Um, well, we can see a lot of things, but I'm not sure I want to mention all of them uh, because they're really too small to appreciate and uh, we're not going to really get into a lot of it, but we still have the caudate there. And so uh, let's, uh, let's move on a little bit because we'll talk about some of these more. So through Boom. Now we are well into the pons. We can see these crossing fibers in the pons, which are actually going to end up forming the middle uh, cerebellar peduncle. We can see the colliculi. Uh, so on the last slide, uh, we had a little bit of the colliculi. Here's the superior colliculus, uh, you know, part of visual processing. So superior colliculus there, we are starting to get into the posterior horn of the lateral ventricles there with the choroid plexus within it, but we still have corpus callosum. Um, okay, and um, so uh, basically that's, that's it for coronal sections. Now we're going to get into horizontal sections. We'll take a look at these horizontal sections. So we are in the pons this characteristic look of the crossing fibers, and those crossing fibers cross into the cerebelli, the cerebellum, the hemispheres of the cerebellum, really, uh, via the middle cerebellar peduncle uh, that you can see there. So this is all the cerebellum, which we'll define more uh, as we go. So this is part of the parahippocampal gyrus uh, um, as we're uh, you know, adding information to the hippocampus, uh, but we don't see much here. So now we're going to go higher in the next slide. So let's take a look. Now we see these um, peduncles traveling into the hippocampus. Uh, so those are the superior cerebellar peduncles at this point because we're in the uh, midbrain and we can see the uh, cruz cerebri there with the midbrain. Uh, so we're getting some of the substantia nigra there. We see the mammillary bodies. So these are the mammillary bodies right there. So let's move a little bit more uh, anterior in this section. So here we can see the um, portions of the internal capsule beginning to be formed here. And those always form within the uh, striatum and the internal capsule always separates the caudate from the putamen. So we can actually see caudate more anteriorly, putamen more laterally uh, within these sections. We still see parahippocampal gyrus beginning to form the hippocampus. Uh, 
So now let's move to the next section and see what happens to that internal capsule. So now we're seeing a lot of that internal capsule here uh, as it's starting to form a kind of V-shape. So we see the caudate, again, more anteriorly, the putamen more laterally. And again, remember, these are horizontal sections. So uh, keep, keep that orientation in mind. This is going to be a challenge to uh, find your bearings and orient. So here we have the globus pallidus, the uh, external and the internal uh, GPI, E and GPI. We have the corpus callosum portion of it here. And of course, that internal capsule separating the caudate and the patamen again. Uh, here we have the anterior commissure right there, joining the two amygdalae together. In the midbrain, we have the uh, red nucleus. Um, and okay, let's, uh, let's move forward here. We're going to start getting some of the thalamus in right here. So uh, now that thalamus is getting much larger. You can see there, we still have the caudate. We still have this internal capsule. And we have this V-shape to the internal capsule. And this V-shape is, is important to get to that. But we have putamen and we have the GPE here. So the anterior, so the, the internal capsule has this V-shape. It has an anterior limb, it has a genu, and it has a posterior limb. The anterior limb separates the caudate from the putamen. The posterior limb separates the putamen from the thalamus. As the posterior limb that actually has all of that sensory and motor information uh, traveling through it. So, uh, what else do we have? We, of course, have the ventricles and the septum pellucidum with the uh, fornices within it. Uh, and hippocampus is coming in, and of course, the cerebellum and the posterior portion of the brain, the corpus callosum. So this is all frontal cortex up here, and we've got uh, probably a little bit of temporal cortex here as well. So moving on to the next slide, we have corpus callosum. We have the internal capsule, that V-shape, caudate, putamen, thalamus. Um, what else do we have? So we have the, uh, so between the thalami, we have the uh, third ventricle. So this is actually the third ventricle becoming the cerebral aqueduct right there. Lateral ventricles, fornix, and the septum pellucidum. Um, what else do I want to mention? So um, that's pretty good for now. I think what we have here, this little nub, is probably the superior colliculus. Uh, and we can see the uh, Still a portion of the parahippocampal gyrus there posteriorly uh, wrapping around to uh, the occipital uh, region. Okay, moving on. Uh, again, so this is getting easy. Corpus callosum, caudate, putamen. Here's the V of the internal capsule. Here's the thalamus, uh, septum pellucidum, the ventricles. Uh, so this is now the third ventricle because we're heading up between the thalami. Um, okay, and the insular cortex here. Of course, we can see the external and the extreme capsules as well. <clears throat> so let's keep moving. Heading higher, corpus callosum, caudate. We're losing the putamen because we're getting too high to see the putamen now. Where there's a tiny bit of putaminal tissue there. Thalamus uh, there. And okay, uh, so all, all, of, all the things, all the things. Moving on. So now we're going to talk about sagittal sections. Sagittal sections are my favorite. Uh, so now in the sagittal section, we can see some interesting things. Of course, the uh, cerebellum, we can see the occipital cortex uh, right here, occipital cortex, and within the occipital cortex. So we can see this weird looking space. This is the ventricle. So the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle traveling up and also forming the, uh, the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. You can see the um, choroid plexus within the ventricle. So this is the posterior horn, and you can see it's going into the occipital cortex. Now we have 
all of this corona radiata traveling down, forming the internal capsule. So here's the internal capsule from the uh, sagittal view. So internal capsule. Uh, so now we are pretty lateral in this view because we can see the parahippocampal gyrus, uh, the hippocampus within it. So this big uh, set of gray matter, this big nucleus is the putamen. We can actually, um, yeah, we can't, we, oh, yeah, we can, we can see a tiny bit of caudate right here between the internal capsule. So just next to the choroid plexus, anterior to it in this view, is the caudate, uh, the caudate nucleus. So the internal capsule is always going to separate the caudate and the putamen. So if you identify the internal capsule and you know the orientation, what's anterior and what's posterior, then you'll be able to identify those structures. So this is actually part of the posterior limb of the internal capsule because we're so far lateral and so far um, you know, back here in this view. Okay, so get your landmark and let's uh, watch how it changes. Boom, so here's the putamen. Here's the internal capsule uh, forming here. We have the GPI and GPE, GPI and GPE right there. Uh, posterior to that, we have the thalamus. We have the caudate here as well. And we're starting to see, so some of this nucleus here is probably caudate as well, um, because the caudate is this C-shaped structure that follows the wall of the lateral ventricles. So here we see some of the lateral ventricle, the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle there as well. And of course, the parahippocampal gyrus giving way. So we got some of the amygdala here. The amygdala is more anterior than the hippocampus, which is right here. Uh, more anterior and uh, more medial as well. Uh, so let's uh, pick a landmark. Moving on to the next slide. Here we go. And so now here is our lateral ventricle. We can see the internal capsule here. So all of that is internal capsule. And we have the caudate, because that's above the internal capsule on the wall of the ventricle. Um, okay, so what we have here is actually probably part of the hypothalamus. This is the anterior commissure within it. This is the thalamus here. And we can see some of the fornix, which is this, kind of this C shape as well, traveling from posterior to anterior. And so uh, the hippocampus is going to be right about here uh, if we were more lateral. And so the fornix travels all the way around in this circular uh, portion, motion, uh, to get to the mammillary bodies. And so now we see uh, the pawns there. We see the crus. Cerebri, those ascending, descending fibers, uh, and the corpus callosum, of course, this large white matter region here is all corpus callosum. So moving on to the next slide, the corpus callosum is starting to form a, uh, a very uh, recognizable structure as we get closer to the midline. And this little black line on the inferior portion of the lateral ventricle, that's the fornix coming from the hippocampus. Now we see the V shaped hypothalamus. Uh, as well, and we see the optic nerve below it. With the so the in the side of the hypothalamus is the anterior commissure. We have the thalamus above it, so all of this is going to be thalamus, and we have a little bit of the caudate right there in, uh, on the wall of the lateral ventricle. Uh, so here we have cerebellum with the superior cerebellar peduncle. We have the superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus below it. The pons below that heading down into the uh, medulla and the spinal cord. So uh, one more section, I believe. Uh, so let's, you know, it's getting easier now because this is closer to the mid sagittal view you've seen before. Corpus callosum, fornix, heading down here toward the mammillary bodies, which we can see circling right now. Mammillary bodies have a mammalothalamic tract going into the thalamus. So all these structures are pointing at each other. 
makes it easy. Just anterior of the fornix, we have the hypothalamus and the anterior commissure. So here's the hypothalamus right there, this V-shaped formation that's starting to form the infundibulum to go to the pituitary gland. But we still got the uh, optic nerve right there. Uh, so here we have the superior and inferior colliculi in the tectum. We have the fourth ventricle here, fourth ventricle, the lateral ventricles beneath the corpus callosum. Uh, we can not see any uh, caudate, but we are now seeing some of the epithalamus, the um, pineal gland hanging off the back of the epithalamus.